Uh, so we wanted to do some technical deep dive about this and um, called the insane mode encryption, but let me explain what this one is. Um, so, you know, we got some questions about how does, what is the AVH system architecture? Um, this is kind of trying to illustrate what it does. We, um, we are cloud native. Obviously, we sit on the infrastructure layer and it's on the instance and you have VPC and then aviatrix gateways and controllers and then dashboard. So that is what, so we, if we were to do another cloud type, that will be something over here and then we will show up as an instance and uh, we will integrate the infrastructure of the cloud native providers APIs. And for example, what, what are the things, for example, if we do a peering between AWS and Azure today, not only we build an IPsec tunnel, but we also program AWS routing table as well as the Azure routing table to, to make them point to AVHS gateway. So you have truly one API or one click solution that um, uh, allows you to complete that. Um, and uh, we uh, went through these use cases that we support. And we, because we're cloud native, we ourselves use a lot of AWS services like SQS and ELB, S3 um, to, to make our, it's actually very important to make our system scale. Because you talk about hundreds of gateways with a single controller. If you do traditional way, you will spend all your resources just to managing, keep alive messages, control messages, and all of that, right? So, I'm going to talk about just three um, technology points, okay? Uh, the first one is insane encryption. What that means is today, I don't know if you guys are aware about it, in all cloud providers, in fact, in all VM-based systems, encryption is capped at 1 gig, 1.25 gig, some will say somehow 2 gig. Mostly it's 1.25 gig, 1 gig, right? Um, that has, that's an industry benchmark. That is actually a barrier. Even you put SRLV, you put the latest CPU, you put Skylake, you put all kinds of, the, the, all the optimization hardware provides, and that is the encryption throughput. That is why transit solution today is capped at one gig. It doesn't matter how many CPU you throw at it, even with the AWS. So um, we have been working for a long time of trying to uh, bring a IPsec, you know, we believe encryption security is the basic fundamental baseline for the future. So to be able to um, solve the encryption, software-based encryption performance is a key to our success. And so we have a technology we, we call the insane mode. It's really about performing 10x uh, throughput for encryption. Um, we have done multiple uh, showcases today. Unfortunately, we didn't have enough time to prepare to show a 20 gig IPsec throughput in AWS between two VPCs. Um, so that's insane. Uh, that is one. A second is mixed protocol routing. This is also very important key to us. You know how traditional routers all run BGPs, either run BGP uh, everywhere. Uh, that's how internet is done, right? When you don't have a centralized authority, that's how the two, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, distributed system, how they exchange route data. Or you have so-called SDN, where rip and replace the entire thing around SDN. And that is very costly. Another one is very complex to manage, right? So we have developed this um, I, a system where if you notice, we run BGP in our transit to, to VGW. The reason we run BGP is because on-prem talks BGP. The on-prem MPLS, everybody. If you don't talk BGP, you can't even talk to on-prem, right? But in the cloud, you don't have to run BGP because the entire cloud network is created by you. You, 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 have, you have complete full visibility to everything needs to go everywhere. Right? With the software defined, it's much simpler because with so many BGP session multiple hops, it's impossible. Even for ISP engineers to troubleshoot because this can easily go to hundreds of them. It's really at the scale of ISP network. Right? So we have figured out a way of, of we, we haven't figured out the name. We call mixed protocol routing. Maybe you guys are more creative. Is, is to, to bridge between the legacy and the software defined in a seamless way so that 
it's convenient for cloud engineers, but it doesn't break the legacy that continue work with them. It's a reduced friction. Um, you guys have questions, interrupt me anytime. So that's the second component of it. The third component is we call event broker. That is actually very important, very critical. That enables us to build, we call cloud scale systems. Like I mentioned, everybody's freaked about when we have one controller, what happened to this one controller and can it scale? Um, there is a trick to it. One of the things we do is when we, so for example, if you look at traditional large system, they're very expensive, very hard to build. One of the things very hard to build is the control plane to data plane, right? Control plane need to push configuration to data plane. When you have a large distributed data plane system, you have to build a lot of retransmission, queuing, you know, uh, uh, timeouts and store messages and all of that. And that makes the control plane super complex. And we are a cloud native uh, networking vendor. What we do, the controller send message to SQS, to Azure Queue, to uh, Google pop and sub. And that's it, we throw it out there, we know it's gonna be delivered, we know it's gonna be delivered in line, it's not gonna get lost, and the controller just walks away and happy. And then the gateway, even if it's in downstate, in a sleep state, whatever, whenever it wakes up, pick up the message and get delivered. That dramatically simplifies our system and make our system very robust and very scale. Even when we're a little company, startup, we can handle much bigger load than these big companies. And that's the only way to manage hundreds of VPCs. Otherwise, imagine if you don't have this controller, then you have to log into each one of them and you have no clue, right? But if you have a controller who cannot scale, that also doesn't work. So that is the third we call uh, event broker. It's a new way of building a loosely coupled, highly distributed system that scales. Can I just say thank you very much for just confirming the point I was trying to make just before this presentation to my colleagues here. That you know, why can't we have this decoupling between the things that have <laughs> been traditionally there, but a monolith, and then you know, break up those things, those components, and let them talk by those mechanisms that you're just talking mm -hmm. about. So thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. <laughs> we have another slide? Okay. Oh, okay, so I'm gonna zoom in, talk about the performance part, right? Like I said, it's an industry benchmark that it's a one gig throughput. No matter how many CPU you throw at it, it, it will not. Um, the, so for example, AWS offer M5, um, uh, M5 24X large, that is 96 core CPU, and it's, it does 25 gig. But if you put that to run IPsec, it will get you 1.25 gig. Why is that? What is the problem? The problem is, okay, the problem is today's software base can only leverage a single core. So it doesn't matter how many core you throw into it, that is the problem, that, that's the bottleneck. And uh, we, have, we have been working for a long time. While we're working with the scaling of controller gateway features, we've also been working with uh, breaking this um, industry barrier that enable these multi-cores to function so that you can, so that software doesn't become the bottleneck because people are not willing to use software because software has, doesn't have performance, right? And the software forwarding today is already can do line rate, 25 gig, no problem, because Linux has figured out how to do multi-core. But encryption, it's still the problem. And so people still buy this very 500,000, a million dollar box just to get 25 gig of throughput. And uh, so, um, and, uh, so that, that is um, the, um, the stuff we've been working on. And we have a release coming up. Uh, in our September time and frame, and then we're going to announce this. And today is kind of a little bit of preview, just to get some kind of response and feedback from the field, and see how you, what you guys think about. Yeah, for for the Delgado's question, yeah. are you seeing the performance to the cloud? As uh, do you do you have workloads that that need that kind of bandwidth? I think the bandwidth requirements vary from customer to customer, obviously. And they typically, when they are being designed, their environments, they sort of, if they're, they're well designed, they have already do the, the work to know how much bandwidth they will require ultimately yeah. for that. And plus, there are static amounts of bandwidth that you get with the pipe anyway. So mm -hmm. people, people typically go for a particular direct connect pipe, for example, and whatever goes through that is yeah. what they are limited to. 
um, and plus they also have to allow for the growth. That's so right. It's, Investment protection, right? You you need to have some headrooms to grow. Yeah. That's I think a bandwidth is always more is better. <laughs> you know. It right. costs more as well. It costs more. We want to democratize that. Yeah. I have a question though. Um, sorry, you, if if that question has not again already been answered, but the gateway mm. um, is that auto scaled? Uh, mm. I don't think that we. Uh, yeah. No. That's all. Yeah. So so we had auto scale before, like a cluster of gateways. Uh, before we actually had a. Um, uh, a feature called that, that you can aggregate multiple gateways to get better performance. But since we figure out this, this multiple, insane, mode. insane mode, this is already, we, we are only using eight cores. AWS has 72 cores of, of CPUs. They're like, industry has, you know, the compute industry has gone so big and so much more than the networking stack. So I think for a while we should be okay. In terms of just running, because today you're you're talking about auto scaling is terribly inefficient. You're you're dumping a lot of a lot of uh, instances. Most of them are idle sitting there. There's only single core working. If you can leverage the multi core, you don't need to run multiple instances. But I was just getting it because um, it's still in line one gateway, for example. Yeah. You know, the more you're passing through it. That's right. Um, and there will be a point where we would need to leverage, which we had the feature already that. Because um, so instance-wise as well, you get different networking performance. Mm -hmm. um, so some are better than the others. Mm -hmm. uh, and to get good networking performance, either you have to have a network opt optimized instance or a bigger one. Uh, That's a very, very good question. Today, AWS instances purely compute and storage and, and disk I.O. optimized. They have not had a network I.O. optimized. Uh, we are working with them and they, we, we're giving feedback to uh, AWS team, Amazon team, about needing a network optimized, doesn't have need a gazillion cores, but just have a bigger network I.O. Uh, but up to this point, that's a moot point, because even I give you a huge network I.O., if you can't leverage the cores, there's no point of doing that, right? So. So, so, but typically in normal operations, you don't have, because you're not using gateways, you're getting direct traffic to it in the traditional model, not mm. the uh, but if you're putting a gateway in line, then network performance becomes very important. Yes. So otherwise, it becomes that's right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. Well, I, I just want to make a comment now. I mean, uh, I, I absolutely love the product. I think uh, it's. Thank you. It's. It's. I think you should change your uh, slogan to "networking made easy." Mm. Now, networking made easy. Uh, networking cloud, made it easy. Cloud networking. Cloud networking. Oh, cloud networking made easy. You, okay. You, you have to attach cloud to it. Mm. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Thank you for that. Yeah. We call it uh, software defined cloud routing, and it's at that VPC layer that made easy. and routing that. That's that made, made that, That's very made easy. Yeah.